Sebastian and Sinia in front already. What a start that is. It's in. Mahrez got it round the wall and he's played a good ball. And Sinia 3-1 up. Brilliant finish from Phil Foden. Foden really gets it in and Sinia will make it four. Hammering the ball. Early doors by KDP. Raheem Sterling. Kevin De Bruyne. Second goal. A very good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us on We're Not Really Here. It does not get easier for Pep Guardiola's record-breaking side as we go for our 11th Premier League win in a row from the start of the year. And today we are on the road again with London calling to take on Mikel Arteta's Arsenal at the Emirates. Always an intriguing clash, always a few goals. And of course we can't not say it is always fascinating when the apprentice takes on the master. So great to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kel Spellman and welcome to We're Not Really Here and here to get into our game against Arsenal, which will take place in an hour's time, is Mr. Sean Gota and Paul Dickoff. Gentlemen, great to be with you. Great to be here as always. Looking forward to it. Very, very exciting. Now, Sean, I'm going to have to ask you about this because we've, uh, we've seen you on the TV this week and you were, you were mentioning about the old quadruple, dare I say it. Is it, yes. is it something that could be uh, in the offering, do you think? Well, yes, uh, you, you've heard me say it, but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, listen, uh, Don't within right house, <laughs> no, 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 but listen, we can do it. But within house, you know, Pep will be just saying, just focus on each game. This game is the most important game. Uh, and when the next game comes, then that's the most important. Uh, but as, but as a fan, listen, I think we can do the quadruple. I think the players that we got, the form that we're in, the tactics, you know, the manager and, and his approach to games, why not? And, and and that mentality though that is coming from Pep, and we see it in his interviews, Paul. I guess that is that is instrumental in how we've been able to carry on the way we're going. It is, and I've, I've said it a lot recently. The the sort of squad, the the feel good factor around them, how they're playing. It reminds me of a couple of years ago, um, the Centurion year, um, the back to back titles, winning the domestic treble, quadruple, yep. if you want. Um, because when you listen to the interviews before or after the game, it's the old born adage: as it's the next game we're worried about. They're not looking too far down the line, and um, they're just sensational at the minute. You know, I look back to last month and um, speaking to City fans, and the general consensus was we had Brighton, we had Sheffield United, we had Newcastle, um, we had Burnley. We expected to win the games, and everybody was looking at February thinking, do you know what? We've got Liverpool away, mm -hmm. tricky tie away at Swansea, Tottenham at home with the Jose factor, um, Everton away. Yeah. And we've just smashed them. Yeah. You know, four away at Anfield. Three last week against Tottenham, three midweek against Everton. You know, it's just gets better and better, and I'm loving it. I mean, I have to say as well, Paul, I think we can all agree on that, and hopefully more goals as well as we take on Arsenal at the Emirates this afternoon. Let's bring you then the team that will be taking on Mikel Arteta's Arsenal side. It looks like this, as chosen by Pep Guardiola. Edison begins in net. We have a back four that consists of Cancelo, Diaz, Stones and Zinchenko. It's looking like a middle three, uh, I hope. We'll be getting into that with Sean and Paul in just a sec. Of Fernandinho, Gundogan, and I think either KDB or Bernardo. And also joining them is Riyad Mahrez, who celebrates his 30th birthday today. A very happy birthday to Riyad Mahrez and Sterling as well. On the bench, we have Zach Stefan, John Stones, Sergio Aguero, Phil Foden, Benjamin Mendy, Ferran Torres, Rodri, Laporte, Gabriel Jesus and Kyle Walker. I mean, the bench itself is, is even a joke. Um, I mean, where do we begin? One name, great to see on that starting lineup, KDB Sean. Wow. Um, it's just fire. The, the bench, the, the starting <laughs> team, KDB, uh, got a couple of minutes the other day, looked like he hadn't skipped a beat. Uh, but KDB is, is a part of things today, and we're, we're excited. We're looking forward to what he can do. We always know he's able to change a game at a heartbeat, uh, his quality. Uh, I, I imagine he'll play uh, the, the false nine. Um, he's played it superbly when he has been there. Um, you know, he's played it like he's played the position his whole, whole career. Yeah. He's, he's just been amazing. I mean, as you've got to say a lot of that attributes down to is that intelligence really when you're able to kind of step into any position. Yeah, like he's, he's football intelligence and football knowledge is, is as good as he is as a player. You know, he, it doesn't matter what position, what situation you put him into. Um, he always produces and he always affects the game. And I'm buzzing his straight back in. I honestly didn't expect him after being out for so long and then getting a couple of minutes during the week for him to go back in. But 
it just shows you what not just what a good player he is, but what a good pro he is because he's obviously proven his fitness mm -hmm. after being out for so long. Um, you know, he's got a record recently of scoring fantastic goals against Arsenal as well. So he does mo more of that to come today. But talking about the false nine, there's about six players in that team that could play the false nine <laughs> yeah. today. The, 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 the way they all rotate around, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they set up. Well, another name that I'm I'm always happy to see on the team sheet is is Fernandinho. What do you think? Maybe the thinking is there, Paul. Obviously, we've seen Rodri, who's been having a you know arguably his best season so far in a, in a City shirt. Um, but I think Fernandinho has been brought in. Why do you think he's he's done that? Maybe just to give um, Rodri a little bit of a rest. You know, he's nine times out of ten he's, he starts every game anyway. Yeah. Um, obviously, looking ahead to Champions League next week. Um, and that, that's what Pep's got at his disposal. You know, you said about the bench there; it's ridiculous. Um, but he can rotate, he can bring players in. Um, and going back to the very, very start, and I was joking with Sean, there's no reason why this team can't go on and win everything, and I say it every year, but yeah. if they keep everybody fit, because the squad strength is as good as, well, it's better than, than anybody else, not just in England, but in Europe as well. And also that, that squad rotation policy now, it seems, you know, because always questions going, our players unhappy that they're not playing, but actually we seem to have really been able to have nailed down that actually you're all part of this squad and we need every single player and you've all got a role to play. I guess that's massive, isn't it? It is, and that, that comes down to man management from, mm -hmm. from Pep and his staff, you know, and the ones that haven't been playing, there's no doubt about it without, without knowing that, that Pep staff will be in their ear saying, look, a couple, couple, couple of big games coming up, you're going to be involved in this game. Um, but I think they all know, and I think the not just the individual mentality, but the, the squad mentality is we're all in this together, and if we're going to win things, we're going to need everybody. And you can tell that whether people are coming off the bench or have not played for a couple of weeks who are coming in because they always want to make an impression. Yeah, and and off the rotation thing, we, we've seen Pep kind of, he's given, uh, you know, Laporte and Diaz a run together, he's given Laporte and Stones together. We've gone back now to what we've seen for most of the season, Stones and Diaz, but that, to go from having, you know, really looking at the centre-halves going, oh, we're struggling a bit, yeah. it's the complete of the ball game now, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, he just knows now, no matter what period he plays, and he, he has also played them once uh, as, as a three, um, and they were outstanding. He just knows that now he's got a great base to, uh, to, to start from, a platform to really build from. And I think when he, when he reflected back on, you know, where City sort of fell short, you know, last season, et cetera, he thought we need to have this base. And now whether we play a two, two center backs or we play a three, the, the guys are just so consistent in their performance. So it's, you know, now we look and we think, well, whoever's playing, we just know it's, it's a solid performance that's, that's going to be put in. I'm just wondering on that as well, whether, going back to the Fernandinho question, because mm. I've, I've veered off and didn't really answer it, <laughs> it, is whether, you know, and it just came to me when Sean's saying about sometimes playing three at the back with Concello pushing on forward and tucking in to make an extra midfielder. Fernandinho was perfect just to slot back in to make it a back three if and when we need to. And 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 we 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 can't not mention as well when we talk about the rotation players coming in. Um, Aguero back on the bench. I mean, he's got to be hoping to to maybe get on the pitch and maybe start getting a bit of run to, a run together. Yeah, look, we're all desperate to see him back on the pitch, so on, <laughs> and I'm sure he is as well. But you know, Pep's wrapping up in cotton wool at the minute, probably looking at the bigger picture. You know, and seeing Munch and Glad back next week, then I think it's West Ham, which is. They've moved into the top four today, so um, the bigger picture from now to the end of the season, I think, is, is, is why we're not seeing as much of Sergio as we want to, and hopefully he's saving up his goals for when we really need them. Do, do, do you think that can, can work for, for Serge, Sean? I don't know if you've had it in your time where you've, you know, you're know kind of wanting to come back, but actually just sitting and waiting, you kind of it's almost like the horse in the, in the, yeah. in the chat before it gets let out. I think for Sergio it can work, but for me, you know, Sergio's a different DNA from all of us. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you know, when, when he, when he gets in the team and then he gets, uh, those, those games going, he's just on a, he's on another level. So, and I think Paul's absolutely right. You know, I remember two, three weeks back, I was thinking, well, it's a big month, you know, the games that we've got coming up. We've seen it going through those games. Uh, you say Everton and Tottenham looking back at some of those games and thinking they were big games. We've gone through them. If we look ahead, we could look ahead, but, but Pep won't. If we look ahead and, and, you know, the games that are coming up, Batching Gladbach, as you said, uh, there's a derby a few weeks down the road. Yeah. These are huge games. So the rotation is so important and, and why I think it's when Sergio Dos come into things, uh, it'll be at the right time. Yeah, just when we need him. I, I got asked this by a friend this week, and I'm going to open it up to her on the show because it is interesting. Obviously, there's, I'm playing devil's advocate here. We all know what Sergio Aguero can do, has done, and is arguably one of the best strikers in the league. But at the moment, given current form of City, where does he fit into that starting eleven? Because 
part of our flexibility has been this almost, I think you mentioned it before the show, Paul, constant rotation. So I look at that and go, where where does Aguero fit in, in a way? And that's a good question, because we've been blown teams away without having a centre-forward, but... but for me, having KDB back, Sergio fits straight back in because you look at the amount of goals, the runs that he makes, and KDB's got it wide. And you know, sometimes I've said in the show before, where's that near post run? Yes. You know, when KDB's whipping the balls in, it's like it's telepathic for Sergio when KDB's in the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows what positions to get into. He knows he's going to create them. Um, at the minute, or maybe the last couple of weeks, you're right. We've not needed him, and it is difficult to see where he fits in. But once he's fit. If Sergio Aguero's fit and fire, and he gets into any team, not just this Manchester City yeah, team. I mean, I have to piggyback and agree with that. Um, but I think this is the, the, the evolution of City in, in, in Pep. And, I, and what comes to mind is a, is a team of midfielders. I think in his dream of dreams as a team, is a team of midfielders. Yeah. And, and, if, and I would include the goalkeeper. When you look at our goalkeeper, he could play in midfield. <laughs> <laughs> he really is that good. Yeah. And so this is, you know, it's, it sounds crazy to say you know the premier league's top goal scorer like where does he get in a team where does he get in our team but when you look at see how pep manages the team and how fluid you know we were talking off off air in terms of how fluid the team are and, and the interchanging and and no matter as a striker you could be in a wide position or in, even in a fullback position you have to make the right decision in that position yeah and 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 essentially midfielders are are that way inclined you know um, and and this is how I, I I see Pep sort of seeing his overall picture. Yeah. Uh, but Agüero for me is a player that I'm like, come on, we gotta we gotta see him in the team because he's a goal scorer. <laughs> he really really is. Yes. Um, well, let's look over to our opponents, Arsenal. We'll, we'll focus on the whole Pep Arteta thing in just a second. But um, last time out, Sean, it was I think just before uh, Christmas, 22nd of December, we won four one, and it was um, it was quite a convincing performance from us then as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean. Again, it, you know, he's the apprentice, uh, learning from the master. Again, City, City, I, I love the mind games that they, that, that they have, you know, in, in terms of certain Pep wanting to, to get over. Uh, and here we're seeing Sachenko. It's what's strange about, what strange about this game, actually, the goals, a lot of them actually came from crosses. And, and, and normally we see City games or City goals that's normally, you know, a through pass. Um, towards the byline and then, then across yes. along the six yard. But again, this is, this is probably the difference where we're looking here. Uh, a lot of them are from crosses and, you know, the magical keepers made a bit of an error there. But it's coming from a magical wand of a left foot there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Paul? I tell you what, and, and, and off that, we saw that left foot again, didn't we, Paul, uh, against Everton? But it also felt like it was a real kind of big moment for Phil, because from this game, he's... He he's was outstanding up. that game. Man of the match um, for me. Um, not just scoring, creating goals as well. The, the finish for his goal That's was sublime. You know, for so somebody cute. so young to be in that position and then the calmness to lift it over just shows you the quality he's got. And then the... The cross in there, but that people say was that in making a foul. He was, he was there already, but I think that was the one where people from outside the club really looked at that game and went, "Wow, what a player he is!" He's starting to announce himself. Um, we say about the the master versus the apprentice, and, and I don't know why I say it as well, but Arteta's kind of been there for a little bit now, and he seems to have really started. We're starting to see his Arsenal team. Uh, he obviously will always be Pep's apprentice, but Paul, he seems to have kind of been in a space now where he's starting to implement his ideas and his philosophies on that team, and they're starting to reap the rewards a bit slightly, do you I think? I think we've all, even when um, Mikel was here, we all knew he was going to be, on, to be a top manager, not just because he was working under Pep, he had his own ideas, he worked fantastically well with the players when they were here, um, but he's, he's shown a bit of metal since he's went in there as well, you know, he's had to deal with some big egos, yeah. he's got Mesut Ozil out, which obviously he wanted out from the start. Um, players that were in the team, he's, he's now been leaving out for the youngsters like Saka, Smith Rowe, he's brought Odegaard in, he's, he's building that. And I don't like saying the pet model because he is his own man, but as in getting youth into the team and, and putting them in at the right time, taking them out. And he's got a few, of the, obviously, the experienced players in there, and, and Xhaka, obviously, Lacazette, Aubameyang. Yep. Um, but he wants to go down that youthful route and, and produce players and bring them in and... And Arsenal got some fantastic young players to come through yet. So he was always going to need time. Um, it made me laugh about three, four months ago, or three months ago, when people were saying he was getting sacked, Arsenal mm -hmm. were going to get relegated. These were the same people that we got the job were saying that he needs two or three years. Yeah. He needs that time to do it, you know, and it's, it's amazing how quickly it flips. But um, it'll be interesting to see how they do set up today because, um, you know, in his, his press conference yesterday, he was talking about known Peps players and everything else, but he, he said a couple of little things about how Peps changed things up. Interesting. Um, which, obviously, 
Um, we've seen the last few weeks, Klopp's tried to work it out, Ancelotti's tried to work it out, Mourinho's tried to work it out, and they can't, and if, if Mikel can't, who can? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and good for us as well, but I guess then off that, because you, you always worry, is there going to be a bit of that psychological advantage, you know, that, that Pep was so integrated in the team and was so, uh, you know, influential on the squad and the players, uh, but given these slight changes now and where we've tweaked our game slightly, it kind of becomes a redundant question that now, doesn't it, Sean? Well, yes, because he, he would know the way that, that Pep had operated before um, and the things he would have looked at in terms of the weaknesses. So he, he would know that Pep would look at Arsenal and say, this is perhaps a, a where we can expose them. Uh, but again, because there's different personnel uh, and, and how how Pep's now been playing with, with false nines, you know, De Bruyne playing up there or Bernardo Silva playing up there, Sterling up there, uh, slight, you know, things, things have been changed. We're seeing... Uh, Gundogan sort of ghosting in, mm -hmm. in between center back scoring goals. Um, so I, so again, you know, he's got his work cut out to sort of figure out how, how to stop City. And I think there's a slight differences from him, how we played from him. Mikel was here and, and now when he's not, you know, and obviously Ruben Diaz wasn't here. Um, Cancelo, I think, had just come in but wasn't really playing. Yeah. Um, and, and the way we are now playing going forward without having that out, out number nine, it seems to be that the front six or seven are allowed to go anywhere they want. Um, with everybody else filling in, it's as if they're all in a, all in a bit of string, string, you know, if KDB goes up there from out wide, Bernardo Silva tucks in, I think the Bernardo's goal the other night there against Everton was a prime yeah. example of it, but there was a little one to the interchange and all of a sudden Bernardo's finding himself in where Gundogan had in the last couple of games even though he wasn't playing and um, it's so difficult to pick up because not just with, with the ball but without the ball, they've all got each other's back, it's as if it's they all know what each other's going to do before, yeah. b b before they actually get it. You know? It is. Well, do you know what? Mahrez, I think, um, was speaking this week and saying, like, now we don't really have to scream and shout at each other when we have the ball because we kind of, we know where somebody is before they're even there. They could almost, you know, play blindfolded is kind of what he was alluding to. Yeah, and, and you know, that sort of detail that he's given, you know, after game tells me that even, even attacking... There are pitches that are put in their, in their minds that they know that there's going to be a player there in that position. When you receive it here, there's going to be a player in that position. And this is why Maurice is saying things. This is the girl that Paul's talking about. Uh, this, this, you know, it's absolutely brilliant. Poetry Sorry, emotion. Uh, it is, and, you know, from that one there, but Bernardo's, um, he started out wide. Um, and as soon as he's come in, I think it's Mares as does, went and twisted it out there. Yes, yeah, And they've yeah, yeah. interchanged okay. twice within that. And before you know it, the ball's getting laid off to Bernardo on the edge of the box. It's as if they're always one step ahead of the opposition in, in what they're going to do attacking-wise. And there's one thing practising that, but this, we all know got the, the hardest thing to do is actually take that out onto the pitch. But to take it onto the pitch consistently yeah. and be relentless as they are doing is just it's something special. And, and off that, you know, Everton, you know, a few years ago was always that bogey team for Manchester City. And you kind of think, all right, is this going to be where it kind of comes back? But, you know, the complacency, is, is that a worry, do you think, for, for City at the moment? Because, I mean, they got that equaliser and you think, oh, is this going to be the game? It wasn't. We found another gear very yeah. quickly, easily, and, and won it. So Complacency, I, I, I very much doubt it. You know, in my scene, observing, studying Pep, he doesn't allow for the, the standards to drop in any way. Uh, Paul's been a little bit closer to it and, and will probably speak more to it. But, again, I don't think he allows players to come off of their standards. And this is why we see a player come in that hasn't played the last two games and you go, well, he's just performed at eight. Yeah. And you think... How, how has he done this? There's no rhythm. He hasn't played the last six games. He just come in and performed, and and I think that's a lot down to to Pep and how the standards that he sets, and it, and the players as well. And obviously, Pep takes the credit for you know managing all this world class talent squad of 25 with big egos and everything else. But he can only do so much with that. Mm -hmm. um, we both know once you're in that changing room. You need leaders in there as well, um, and I say all the time you don't just have to be a leader to shout and scream out in a football pitch for 90 minutes, anybody can do that. Yeah. Um, but if MD is a little bit complacent, which I don't think they are, there's players in the changing room now that will dig them out for it and they won't let it happen. And, and you rely on your senior players as a manager for that to happen because you can't you can't mother them, baby them 24-7. You can't be in their ear 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the players will spend more time with their teammates than they will do with their families. So that has to come from within that group as well. And is that then where they talk about, you know, having that, the, the competition for places, you know, actually is it is a positive thing? You know, it's, it's such an obvious thing to say this, but the fact that knowing that, you know, if Cancelo has a bad game, Walker's going to come straight back in and, and, and do a thing. Is is that, is that would you say, is credit to the, the players' mental attitude? Because I don't think they all had that before coming here. No, but it's the end goal. 
Um, so if oh, you're yeah. Kyle Walker today and you're not playing, you're thinking, I've got a Champions League game midweek. I want to win the Champions League this year. I want to win the Premier League. You know, if you're Gabriel Jesus, Sergio Aguero on the bench, they know they're going to get the chance because they want to be winners at the end of it. And it's yeah. that winning mentality, not just as individuals, but as the whole squad. I can't go through. There's not one name in that first team squad that I would think, do you know what? That winning mentality is not quite there. He's not quite got that mm -hmm. there. Every single one of them have it. And, and, and Sean, for, for the, do you think the players are aware that they are part of something special, or do you think it's you don't want to get distracted by by that sort of thing or talk, you know, from I, outside? Yeah, I think they know they're they're part of something special. They just want to, again, they they understand the importance of you know all that they've done up to this point, and know in order to to make eighteen consecutive wins, if you like, in all competitions, it's about winning just the next game and not looking beyond that. So it's about today's game, mm -hmm. you know, to win to win eleven Premier League games in a row. It's about today. And, and and that keeps you grounded because it keeps you hungry because they also know that Arsenal's a good team. Yeah. You know, Arsenal can show up on a big game like this. So so they know that they've they've got to be at the races. What is our biggest threat when it comes to Arsenal today, Paul, do you think? Um, I think, uh, obviously, Aubameyang's the one on good form. Odegaard's finding his feet in there. I love young um, Bukaro Saka. I think he's he's a top, top player. I know going to the teams in a minute. I'm really surprised Smith Rowe's not playing mm -hmm. because he's a talent. And, you know, that's a problem I said when they signed Odegaard is can him and Smith Rowe play in the same team because they're very, very similar. They both want to play in that number 10 role. But... It's, it sounds crazy and maybe a little bit boring, but for me, it doesn't really matter what Arsenal do today. If we're at the top of our game like we have been and keep showing that consistency, I don't believe that Arsenal team, although there's good players in there, there's experience, nice mix of youth and experience, I don't, they're, they're not good enough. No. <laughs> you know, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I just look at the last, not easy to say the last 18 games, but especially the last month or so, and we're, we're a completely different level away from everybody else at the minute. What would you, what would you both attribute that to? We I had a question. Um, I think that we was going to ask it and didn't. But it feels like we're a more complete team than we've ever been before. I'm, I'm, is there any key areas that you would that yeah. you've seen, Sean, and gone? I think that's slightly tweaked, and that's because of that. Yeah, we are we are a complete team. And when I say team, I'm not talking about eleven. I'm talking about squad. Mm -hmm. So when players come in, the standard they 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 do not drop. They just stay there. Um, and if I was to sort of point out. You need a base, you need a platform, and I think uh, Diaz coming in, uh, that competition coming in, it's allowed us to have a real solid base. Stones is then when, hey, you all forgot about me, and, and now we're like, you, you don't know if you're saying who plays along Diaz or who plays alongside Stones, and, and Laporte is quality. And Laporte was the main defender that we thought, who plays alongside Laporte? Yeah. And, and so this is the, the, the great conundrum that Pep has, like, okay, Today, you know, is Diaz and Stones, and they have performed brilliantly so much that people had conversations and went, "Well, can Laporte get in there? I don't know if he can get in there." And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, "I remember what Laporte was doing. I know what a quality player is. Yeah. We can't do disregard Laporte. He is quality. Mm -hmm. So he's got three quality defenders as a base to just really build from, and which is why we can see the Gundogan, Gundogan." Yeah, Gundogan, Gundogan, <laughs> perform, yep. De Bruyne, and, and the rest. I mean, we keep talking about us, and rightly so, about how fantastic we are on the ball. You know, the games I've been in Tottenham last week, I, I, I just sat and watched us without the ball. You know, look, obviously we're lucky enough to be here, and um, the, the sort of second half where I was sat was right in line with our back four. And the amount of the pressing and they squeezed the life out of Tottenham whenever Tottenham had the ball they were constantly pushing up if there was no pressure on mm -hmm. as soon as they were dropping off if the ball went one side they were all pushing up not just the back four but the whole team and as soon as one man goes to press the ball you know we talk about obviously you're saying about Diaz, Laporte and Diaz is John Stones and massive factor in keeping the clean sheets but how hard they work as a team yeah. without the ball is phenomenal mm -hmm. and it doesn't always get noticed because we're that good with the ball but Tottenham, I don't think Tottenham played that badly last week. I don't think Everton played that badly no. during the week. We just squeezed the life out of them mm -hmm. to win the ball back. And then when, when we got the ball back, they couldn't get it off us. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they did get it back, we were squeezing. You know, there was just, um, there, there used to be a trigger in the team um, for Pep a couple of years ago. And, you know, it was Bernardo Silva a lot of the time that would go and press. Now it seems to me as if it's... He's went, the nearest man to the ball presses, and everybody else goes. Yeah. That, that is the trigger now. It doesn't matter who it is in the pitch. 
If the opposition's got the ball, the nearest man goes, and then you watch everybody else go and to win the ball. It is, yeah. yeah, and it's and I guess you know, same as like we say, it's a bit telepathic, and you don't have to think about when they've got the ball. Without the ball, they're not even. They already are doing it's second nature, aren't they? Which is so exciting, um, and hopefully more of that's come uh, at the Emirates. But let's have a little listen now to see what our coaching players have to say before the game. Pep, it's your 22nd game against Arsenal as a coach. You've faced them more than any other team. What do you make of this Arsenal that Mikel's put together and what problems are they going to give you? Yeah, I think it's the, the stadium I, we have visited the most uh, uh, every year when I was Barcelona by Munich and here. Uh, yeah, it's, I think Arsenal with Mikel keep the identity always I had in the last two decades, three decades for Arsene Wenger. So value with the ball, uh, be, be leading role in every game or try to be leading role in every game. Uh, and uh, yeah, they had up and downs like all the teams. So we saw the now start of the Europe competitions and you will be the results will be so difficult for every team. Both you and Mikel Arteta have made lots of changes today. Is that essential with the schedule you have at the moment? I have done many, many times since... <laughs> since uh, this year, so you cannot sustain playing all, 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 all most old competitions with uh, with just 11, 12, 13 players. It's impossible. So we are struggling. So it's, everything is weird, you know. So and that's why I try to as much as possible everybody involved. How good is it to have Gundogan back and also after a longer break, Kevin De Bruyne? Yeah, it's important, but uh, you know, Phil play exceptional last game and and to rest a little bit so yeah you have to to make every everybody play so the last games I may play three games John didn't play the last one so uh, yeah try to to put everyone in conten in contention in attacking areas it feels like so many different ways your team could line up what can you tell us about positionally where players will be today for example through the middle Sterling perhaps yeah Perhaps. Oh. We're going to try to, to play good. It doesn't matter which position. Everybody knows or have to know exactly what you have to do in the position that they play, defensively, offensively. And, uh, yeah, we're going to move. At the end, if we move quick the ball and everybody in his position, we'll find the, the spaces to attack. Is that the best thing, actually, that even for someone who knows you as well as Mikel Arteta does, you're unpredictable in how you're going to go about it? Yeah, if this one person knows better than anyone is Mikel. So he knows what with our thoughts and especially the individual quality of our players. So at the end, football is uh, when we talk about tactics, we have to talk about players. Tactics without players is not tactics. And he knows absolutely all of us. And, and uh, yeah, it's a good advantage for them. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Pep Guardiola there speaking ahead of our fixture against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium and now I'm kind of saying do we need the Pep interview because when you've got Paul and Sean in the studio we basically cover everything he's going to say anyway but hitting home exactly what you were saying there that it doesn't matter who's on the pitch or what position they're in they all know what they have to do yeah and, and they all know their jobs and they're all they're all so well drilled and you know it's it's good to know that me and Sean actually know what we're talking about sometimes and, that, <laughs> and we're not just blagging it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that is never yeah. the case. Um, mentioned there on, on Gundogan, and it brings me nicely kind of to our, to our next talking point, and I wondered uh, who is your player of the season so far? And, and this is a question I want to extend to all our viewers as well watching, because I think it's a really interesting topic of conversation. If you use the hashtag WNRH, player of the season so far, we've just obviously gone over that kind of halfway hump, back end of the season to come. Um, um, so many to choose from. Sean, do you want to do you want to kick us off? Who maybe yours yeah. might be? I may need a bit of help. <laughs> what do you think? Eh? <laughs> I tell you what, it's probably, probably more it's, helpful. Yeah, I'm probably thinking it's a good eight choices. <laughs> Listen, it's um, there's so many quality players. You know, um, Gund Gundogan has been brilliant. Uh, Cancelo. It's been I've really been amazed by Cancelo because he looks as though he can play in midfield for me. Uh, Agreed. He's, he's just been awesome. It's been beautiful to watch this guy play because the game is beautiful. It's it's just like, what's he going to do? Uh, and I'm going to come around to my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to go with Diaz. Okay. That would be my choice. Because? Because, again, he's allowed us to be solid. He's allowed us to give that platform, uh, you know, to 
to go on and, and express ourselves uh, in the middle third, in the offensive third. You know, Rodri, I'm scared, Paul, because I'm calling on anybody. <laughs> Sean, Sean's gone for the whole approach there. Yeah. <laughs> Cover them all up. He's, co- he's covered himself oh, well, there. <laughs> he really did listen to the mannequin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but you know, he's right. You're not even, I would even, I would put Phil Foden in, yeah. in that category. You know, people are saying only come to prominence, um, but he's, he's been fantastic all season. Mm. Um, whether he's, he's, he's starting games or he's coming on, he always has an impact, but, you know, it sounds as if we're just agreeing with each other today, but and I think at the minute, I know there's still a long way to go, I'll probably say Ruben Diaz, and mm-hmm. I had a conversation with my boys last week, and they were asking me about player of the year at the end of the season, not just for City, but in general. Yeah. And obviously Gunda came out, there's the Harry Canes, there's the, the, all the normals, and I said, well, I'm not being funny, if, if Virgil van Dijk came on it in his first season because of the, the whole influence that he's had on one team, yeah. why can't Diaz? Totally agree. And Liverpool didn't win the league that year either. So yeah, Ruben do. Diaz has got to be up there um, with a massive shout. Just, I think the impact on a defence that's always been criticised to, to, to be that big for somebody so young is, mm-hmm. is amazing. And, 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 and I think, you know, it's that the point you said before about what is one of your key changes, it, it has given us that solid foundation which I think we've been craving for since the days of... Vincent Company, really, you know, and I think that's that's been instrumental, hasn't it? It has, and I can't believe I didn't mention Stones. I I, I try to go through the whole team, right? So <laughs> get that one in there. Get, as get well. that in there as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the 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 team are so consistent, and the players that come in when they come in perform to such a high level. And it, and and Paul and I know, having been out there, it 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 isn't as easy as this team make, make it, it look. look yeah. I'm telling you, and. You know, it's all credit to, to the coaching staff and the players to be able to go out there, not play the last game, and then come in and perform at a level and just think, he looks as though he's played the last 10 games. Yeah. Um, it really is. And for me, I feel privileged to be able to, as a fan, to be able to watch City, to be able to watch and, and sort of observe Pep and see what he does. Yeah. I, I really, you know, people talk about Ronaldo and Messi that we're blessed to be in this period to see them compete against each other. I think we're blessed to have Pep Guardiola as a manager here. I really do. The guy is just amazing. I couldn't agree more. I, and we've got a Gundogan interview coming up who's got to be another um, you know, name that we definitely have to have in contention player of the year. But it's got to the point now where you've got that used to watching Pep City. I now watch, when I'm watching other Premier League games, I'm watching teams and I go, I know what City would do there and it isn't that. You can see the, the touch or the passes. It feels like the wrong decision because we're so used to seeing the right decision. It's amazing. It is, and it's, it's, I keep saying it, it's, it's how relentless they are yeah. in wanting to do it. There's, there's no sort of having little five-minute breathers within games or taking your foot off taking your foot off the pedal for a couple of minutes to get your breath back or, or whatever. You know, They're just at it all the time. And for top players to have that, makes them world class players and, and we're so blessed like, like Sean said there to not just have Pep but to have this group of players and been able to watch and enjoy it. Great lesson there for young any young budding footballers watching as well mentality and having the right mindset is a, definitely I think a key component in everything we're talking about here. Um, so good to see that man back in our starting 11 Kevin De Bruyne. He's going to be partnering Fernandinho and Gundogan who we can hear from now. Edison, Gundogan will try and run onto this one. Gundogan has picked up the ball and Gundogan beats the goalkeeper. We are very happy, not just happy about uh, the results that we got recently. Um, I think even more happy about the way we are playing at the moment. So um, yeah, um, we are grateful. We don't take it for granted. Um, and obviously we will try to, to continue like that. But to other seasons, um, but also because of the fact um, that I just play this offensive role now. Um, so I just try to be there, I just try to help my team as, as much as possible, but not just offensively, also def- defensively I try to be there, I try to um, win duels, I try to block shots, um, just where I'm needed, you know, and um, I know the game is so intense um, that I have to prepare myself as good as possible in training sessions but then also when I'm at home um, try to give myself the the best possible rest um, and to just be ready for every single game and um, then everything will work out quite well it will work out the way it worked out over the last few weeks and I will just try to, to continue like that
That is what we love to hear. That is Ilkay Gundogan there. Um, and, of course, definitely contention for player of the season. Remember, hashtag WNRH. Let us know who's your player of the season so far. A couple of sentences as well with your reason why. And we'll get through them a little bit later. Um, got a fun game in just a second, gents. But only I wanted to ask you, because he kind of touched upon it there. He himself says, I can't quite put my finger on what's kind of changed or, or what's happened. But I wondered from, from both of you watching, have you noticed anything he's doing differently to have kind of be in the vault form that he's in at the moment? I'm not. I'm not sure about doing anything differently, but the, the the answer to the question is really in everything he said. You know, doing everything he can to be the best, ready for his game. He talks about his preparation at home. He talks about uh, training hard. Talking about winning tackles as an offense. He says his position is offensive, but he's talking about winning tackles and blocks, and then also being being a, being effective when is when is playing in the final third. Uh, those are the things that are contributing to to him being talked about in the way we are because, again, he's looking after himself, eating right, you know, resting. Uh, when the game comes around, he knows that he's ready for the game and that he doesn't have to sort of stress that, oh, this is a big game. Am I going to perform? He actually said, no, I'm ready for this. Yeah, I don't, um, you know, you listen to people outside the club um, about Gundogan in the last few weeks and um, they seem to think that he's only just come to prominence now for us. Yeah. But he's been a fantastic player since he came here. Mm -hmm. um, and he's had a couple of bad injuries, you know. He always... Nine times out of ten, Pep's always picked him in big games, especially yep. European games. I remember a few years ago, the game against Barca out here, he was the best player on the pitch. Yeah, he was. We beat Barcelona. Um, the end, the sort of last couple of months when we won the back-to-back -back titles, when Fernandinho was out injured, he came in and was fantastic for yeah. about ten games. And a big part of his going on and winning the league, chasing Liverpool down, Liverpool bleeding down our mechs. He was outstanding. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, because he's added goals to his game, and that's only, but that's only because he's been moved that little bit further forward. Yeah. Because technically he's fantastic. Um, his reading of the game is great. But he's been a wonderful signing since he's been here, considering the injuries he's had. Um, and I think it was only 20 million quid. Wow. Yeah. So, well, and also was Pep Guardiola's first signing within like, it was the first thing that he wanted done. And he was still injured. He was coming out of his, he wasn't even fit, I think, when Pep signed him. So it just goes to show how much Pep loves him. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah, I think it was something like 20, 20 million. Yeah. I mean, that is an absolute bargain. For me, you mentioned about te technique. Uh, he has this ability to receive a ball, you know, with his left foot and touch it perfectly for his right foot or receive it with his right foot and touch it perfectly for his left foot. And we never seem to see him making, I know City don't play this way, 40 yard passes, but he's, he's like, Perfect. He's like brilliant at making the 15, 20 yard passes, all side foot. And, and this is why you look at his stats and you say it's like 90%, 95% accuracy. Yeah. Um, but his ball control and his, his body positioning and, 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 and how to receive a ball, but also what he's added as Paul said, because he's now, you know, uh, more of an offensive player or the role when he plays there. He's, he's, he's timing. He's, he sort of walks around in the final third and he's just waiting and then he just bursts into a space. You know, I like to say ghost because they don't see anybody and then all of a sudden he's there and it's, you know, and it's, and it's scoring. It's, uh, it's outrageous. Well, we've got a little game inspired by Gundo. Have a little look at this. Gunners! <laughs> In the way not really here, studio. It's very simple. It does exactly what it says in the tin. I've got a question here, and I need you to tell us, is it Gundo or Gunners the answer? Okay. Uh, so question number one is this. I think we should do this a little bit more often as well. Um, okay. Sean and Paul, who do you think has more goals this year? Gundogan or the combined total of Lacazette and Aubameyang? That is this season. Who has more goals? Gundo or Aubameyang and Lacazette? I'm I'm gonna go, Gundo. I think Aubameyang hasn't, Lacazette hasn't scored quite a bit, and I'm I'm gonna go Gundo. You gonna go Gundo? I'm gonna go Gundo as well. You're gonna go because Aubameyang hadn't scored for ages, and then he got his hat trick last week, didn't he? Do you know what? I think it was the hat trick that's helped tip it because before Actually, that... Actually, I was going to say that hat trick. <laughs> 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 they together have scored 16, Gundogan 11. Yes. So it's the last couple, last week and a half, they've only just been able to trump it. Aubameyang's had eight and Lacazette has had eight. He's not scored. It was start of the season, Lacazette bagged a few, I think. So close. Okay. Um, who has had more clean sheets? The Gunners Brazilian centre-back pairing of David Luiz and Gabriel or... Ilkay Gundogan. Who's had more clean sheets? It's got to be Ilkay. 
Agreed? Yeah, yeah, Gundo. Sp- oh, day. Spot on. He's had more than double. They've only had six Gundos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14. Well, talking, bro. Okay, next Wolf one. Wolf Mark, Paul Wolf Mark. <laughs> are we competing or are we together? <laughs> You're together. Come there on, we we go. 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 Dream Strike Horse. All right, partner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed there, then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Uh, okay, uh, who do you think is more block shots? Spanish defender Hector Bellerin or Gundogan? Who has had more blocked shots? Is it Gundo or is it the Gunner? Are we talking just this season? Just this season. Ballerin was injured for a period. I'm going to go Gundo as well. Saying Gundo. Happy to agree there, Paul. Come on, Paul. Bring it here. I'm going to disagree with him just because of what he said in the last question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just... Only because Gundo's playing that much further forward, um, I'm going to go Bellerin. Can say. Sean. Sean, you will be correcting Gundogan's had more blocks. He's had three more blocks than Bellerin. Wow. Eight to Bellerin's five. I only sing when I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> good job City fans weren't like that, wasn't it? Um, okay, final question. Okay, this is a good one. Who has had more average passes per match this season? Gundogan or Grant Xhaka? Who has had more average passes per match? Gundogan or Grant Xhaka? A lot goes through Xhaka, but... Oh, I've got, got to be Gundo. I've got to be Gundo, yeah. Gundo. Gundo, come on, bring Same it in, Gundo, baby! Gundo. On that question, it was the Gunner. One pass more. Xhaka Whoa. averages around 66. Gundo averages around that kind of 65 to 63 mark, it says here. So, so close. We could do, we can, we're going to do one more. Do one more. This is a rogue, rogue uh, question here from, uh, from a director. Question five. Uh, whose cousin has played volleyball at an international level? Would it be Gundo or would it be the gunner, Martin Odegaard? So we could go, come away from football. It's general personal, personal life here, well, Christian. It's Gundo against the gunner, so I'm going Gundo. You're going Gundo. <laughs> I'm going Odegaard. You're going Odegaard. Because I think we would have heard Gundo's one before. You're right there, you know, Paul. You actually. We hold can. on, hold on. Can I, can I say I'm going to stick with Gundo? You get yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, going to yeah, say, yeah. Change the answer. well, you're going to be glad you stuck with Gundo, because it is Gundo. His cousin Naz Ademir is a volleyball player for Fenerbahce in the Turkish women's national team. There as you well. go. There we go. See, we don't just talk about football here, and we're not really here. Knowledge. We're bringing you those personal life lessons as well. Um, really enjoyed that. And, of course, Gundogan is also starting uh, for us against Arsenal. That's coming up in just around, well, over 15 minutes' time. Um we always like to dig into the vault here on, on We're Not Really Here and, and enjoy some of the, the magical moments throughout your careers. We, we've done the same, not quite as magical this week, gentlemen. And, uh, please, this is, this is, I'm blaming the producers for this one because we're, we're looking at a, a fixture back in 2000. I don't know if you remember it was City versus Arsenal. Uh, you had the likes of Henri on the pitch. You had like the, uh, rights of Bergkamp. You both played, but you're both on the receiving end of a, uh, a 5 0 loss. Do you remember my memories from this game, gents? Yes. Can somebody apply some pressure, please? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey. Come on. Apply some pressure. This is why Paul and I are always exactly. back defending. <laughs> so I don't think I touched the ball this game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, this this is, you know, it's one of the, the greatest teams in, in, in the Premier League yes. history. Um, but and it, you've seen the, the scoreline was the scoreline, but it, it, well, it ended up five and. I remember going to the changing room afterwards and we were just celebrating that we'd kept it down to five. Kept it single figures. High five it. Well done, boys. Yeah. <laughs> For us, keeping it down to five was like picking up a point that day. <laughs> and then, do you know what? It's, it's, it's interesting though because it, it, kind of a thing why we spoke about it is because you, you could kind of say now that's what a lot of teams are experiencing when they face this Manchester City team. And, and how, how, how did you even prepare? How do you go about playing in a game like that? Well, sure. without... <laughs> being respect disrespectful we were probably like a team that's in the bottom two or three we just really went with a work ethic they you know they they had that quality and mm-hmm. that's what we see today with city is yeah. it's it's a world-class quality uh and and they had that with you know players like Thierry remember, Marie and Burkett. i remember joe saying is after the game that just just put that behind you because that team can do that to anybody um, we just came up from back-to-back promotions, you know, two seasons previous to that, we are playing in League One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're coming up against Bearcramp, Henri, Perez, Lundberg. They were just, they were an unbelievable team to watch and just so difficult to play against them, you know, all joking apart. I remember, I thought, I must have touched the ball about three or four times that day and I was really? chasing it back, <laughs> trying to get tackles and to help your team out because they were just so fluent, pace to burn all yeah. over the team as well and powerful. And just so difficult to play against. Okay, yeah. here's, here's my next big question for you both then. Uh, which team 
would you rather play against now? Would it be that Arsenal team of 2000s there with those players that you mentioned, or would it be this Pep Guardiola team? Which one would you rather face? I, th I think it's, it's, it's a gr brilliant question, but I think it's an easy answer. I think because City have played against different teams, teams that will have a low block, meaning park the bus, teams that will probably uh, try a high press and then, then create a mid-block, and, and City still break them down and create chances and opportunities, and they have numerous guys that can score goals. I've seen Gundogan, De Bruyne, Sterling, Mahrez, these, you know, we're the only team do have, have what, more than five players or six players? Yeah, different score, goal scorers, yeah. Yeah, different goal scorers, score over 10 goals. So that stat in itself tells you City are more complete as a team. I think it would be more difficult to play against City. Uh, that team was phenomenal. It really was. Um, but again, I think if, if Burkamp was quiet and Henri was quiet, if we somehow managed to keep them quiet, there wasn't a lot of other players that, that really popped up with regular goal, you know, winning the game. Yeah. So I don't know if you differ with that. No, I was, just, I, I was just actually going to say that. I think that team, especially that 2000-2001 season, if you took Dennis and um, Terry Henry out that team, they were nowhere near the same team. Now, to, to look at this team now, we've been without Gundogan during the week, we've been without KDB, Sergio Aguero. Uh, the... the the quality and the strength that we've got to come in if, if something didn't happen. And, and also, the got made, made a great point. It, this City team break down any formation that they're up against. Yeah. You know, I think it would be a good game them playing against each other. That'd be hard. If you could. Great, yeah. I think if, it, if we were that team that lost five that day, we would probably lose ten <laughs> against this pet team because they're just so good. Because uh, uh, only because of, you know, you're saying that you, you played against that great team. Because me and my dad are always sat there talking, like, I would hate to be on that pitch playing against City because you must, you know, just be like that. How, what mentality do you have to try adopt in, in the game? Because, you know, like, what, I be in the tunnel guard, couldn't, do not think of anything worse than coming up against these for 90 minutes. So how, what is the, how, what mindset do you have to try and find? Yeah, I think everybody's different. Um, I know that within that squad, some players would have been out the mindset that day that, look, just let's keep the score down as, as low as we can. Right. But, I genuinely, and this is how stupid I was, I would genuinely believe walking down that tunnel at Highbury that I was going to score and we were going to win that game. <laughs> because that was the mentality that you yeah. had to have. You might think nine times out of ten they're going to beat us, but this is going to be the one today. Um, but when you're on the pitch and they are popping it around you and they're scoring one, they're scoring two, they're scoring three, you've just got to, you've just got to do it, do it for your team, do it for yourself and um, not let your head go down. And it's difficult. You yeah. know, when... When you're not getting a sniff, it's it's like it's de it can be degrading as well, yeah, as, you know, personally, um, and and as a group. But you've just got to be, try and be as strong as you can, and just just keep going to the very end. Those that you never thought about, maybe after thirty minutes, going like, do you know what? That's I'm um, take me off. Yeah, not yeah. today. Not today. <laughs> but listen, we 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 saw that a little bit the other day. It was against Everton, you know, Everton are defending quality team, quality manager. Every now and again, the ball gets knocked forward. Richarlison chasing it, thinking, I'm already 10 yards behind him. He's going to win it. He then circulates the ball. Then it, there's the next attack. That This is what City do, this current City team. Mm. And, and it, it, it be frustrating for forwards. And, and you see, when, when City are really, really into their rhythm, teams are really struggle because the, the, the forward players thinking, I want something to hang on. Give me, give me the odd chance. Give me the odd ball down the side where I, or a ball into feet where I can roll my play and, and, and make something happen. It, it happens so few and far in between. Yeah. It's discouraging for, for forwards. And they're just like, I'm running, I'm chasing a fullback now. Yeah. And it's like, to what uh, end? To, yeah, yeah. To what yeah, end? Yeah. To try to get a result. And then next thing you know, it's like, how we get two down? I haven't even seen their goal. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. But look, you need, you, you need your teammates yeah. around you to keep you going as well. And, you know, if you are going through or if my head was going down and, you know, we used to be very good at communi communicating with each other and, or if my head had gone sometimes, so you would just go, oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> and then bring you back in, yeah. Get back on it. And vice versa, wouldn't yeah. it? If, Without, if no. Sean had went and chased somebody down and I could see him turning around and going, and jogging back, I'd be like, come on, go on. Let it go yeah, straight so, back in. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're relying on it's each other so much on the pitch as well. Um, thank you, gents. Uh, let's take a little moment to celebrate and highlight one of our brilliant support club supporters clubs that exist all around the world, and which was so appreciative for from us uh, at the club. Uh, and we want to highlight this week our supporters club over in Cameroon. I think this quite could possibly be the best supporters club video yet. Check this out. 
I am Mimi. I am Bave. We are from Cameroon Citizens. The official supporters club Manchester City Cameroon. Yes. Cameroon. I started watching Manchester City in 2002-2003, the days of Lucien Metomo and Mark Vivian Foley. But I really became a Manchester City fan in 2006. The idea of starting the supporters club in 2018. Yeah. This was because we wanted to join the different Manchester City supporters around us so that we could join you, watch and support our favorite team together. Exactly. Guys, these are the best parts of being a member of this branch. Occasionally, there are the members who stay to watch everything. An interesting fact about this branch is we started as few individuals, but eventually we are more than 40 members. Who are not just fans, but one big family. Besides winning the league this season, our expectation will be to go all the way and lift the Champions League. so much to our supporters club over in Cameroon uh, as I say I mean the editing was there the production value and of course the one big family I mean that's what we are all about here at Manchester City um, so we'll be able to get that plaque over to you and uh, definitely be up for a little dance at some point uh, in Cameroon I think gents another one we can go to yeah certainly I, I like that but they got to teach me a little bit of those moves yeah, so, yeah. what do you think Paul <laughs> uh, you're alright mate I've seen your moves <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you've just joined us, thanks for joining us on We're Not Really Here. Paul Dickoff and Sean Gota with me in the studio. Uh, let me just recap the two teams that are going to be taken to the pitch at the Emirates at 4.30. Manchester City's team looks like this. Edison in goal. Zinchenko, Stones, Diaz and Cancelo are at the back. We have Fernandinho holding. And then I'm just going to say a forward five. of Gundogan, Mares, KDB, Bernardo and Sterling. As we turn our attentions to our opponents, Mikel Arteta's Arsenal team looks like this. Leno in net, Bellerin holding Mari and Tierney at the back. We have Elneny, Xhaka in the middle, then with Saka, Odegaard, Pepe and Aubameyang for Arsenal. Um, we, we touched upon briefly, uh, Paul, Aubameyang being a threat as well, but it seems, Sean, that Arteta's kind of found his, his balance now, his formation, so to speak, the, the two holding players, three in front of them and one striker, and that, that seems to be working. So a worry for City, you think? Well, yes, it, it, you know, he's found his balance, but again, I think he'll, he'll take a strategy that let's, let's sit, protect, and try to catch on a counterattack. So we're talking systems as to how they're going to play, but I think... City will dominate the ball, uh, and they'll look to try to get Aubameyang, you know, going on that left side. I think for them, Arsenal to get anything, Aubameyang has, has to show up, yeah. and uh, he's vital to, to them scoring goals and, and uh, just, just them winning in any way. But, yeah, City, City I think, will, will, will dominate the game. Diaz and Stones, of course, will be making sure to keep Aubameyang quiet then. Um, before we get our final predictions from us in the studio, let's take a look at today's Guess the Blue. Um, they've been a mixture of someone's a little bit easy, someone a little bit tricky. Let's see how today's looks. Okay, here we are, gentlemen. Oof. Wow. Um... I, just, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing we're playing Wolves there, by that. I think it's the, the Wolves kit. We, we're I, I think against. I can guess the Wolves player more than I can guess, guess the City player. Guess the City player yeah. on that one. Mystery Wolves player this yeah. week. Um, okay, now if you think you've maybe got a better idea, we're, we're struggling a little bit here in the studio, so if you've got a better idea, remember you can drop us a, your suggestion on using the hashtag WNRH. You could even maybe let us know your player of the season and then who maybe your guess is for, for Mystery Blues. So just use the hashtag or we'll work through some at half time and full time. All right, gents, um, we've got just six minutes until kickoff, so finally, Time to squeeze in our predictions. Um, Sean, I'm going to begin with you. What are you thinking today? Well, what, whichever way you look at it, it's a 3 nil. I don't uh -oh. know how you want to see it, but it's, <laughs> I'm going 3 <laughs> We really love nil. to see it 3 0. Another <laughs> clean sheet for the boys. That, of course, then will bring us to 17 consecutive wins. Unbelievable. What do you think, Paul? I'm going to go one better. I'm going to go 4 0. Love another that. clean sheet. Um, another win. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually, I think KDB. Masterclass today as well. I like the sound of that. Um, okay, well, come join us at half time and full time. We'll be getting into all the action and all the big moments of the game. Got around just under kind of five, four minutes until kickoff. So get yourself a brew, get your feet up, and hopefully, we're going to be talking about a city win come full time. That would make it an unbelievable 11 Premier League wins in the row since January. Come on, city.
And City are in front already. What a start that is. It's in. Mahrez got it round the wall. And he's played a good ball. And City are 3-1 up. Brilliant finish from Phil Foden. Foden gets it in. And City will make it four. Amarit Laporte. Early doors by KDB. Rashford. 